Morning everyone, welcome to Tuesday's Thought for the Day. We're going to carry on with our little series this week looking at the main themes of Romans. Remember, we've got the salutation at the start and then we've got sin, salvation, sanctification, sovereignty and service. So we started yesterday talking about uh, sin and the fact that everyone, all humans, uh, are sinners. We all make those choices that we think are best in our own eyes instead of submitting to what God says is best for us. And today we're going to carry on uh, that overview of Romans and look at the next uh, section which is salvation. And the salvation bit runs from Romans 3.21 all the way through to 5.21. And as we were saying yesterday, sin is a problem because it causes separation from God and it means that because we don't do what God says and we do what is right in our own eyes we don't have the righteousness uh, required we don't meet God's righteous standard but and then the, the problem with that is is we're unable on our own to do that because we we can't make those right decisions even when we're faced with them we we, we fail that test we sin uh, every single day so the amazing thing about the grace of God is that he has provided the solution to the problem of sin. And the solution to the problem of sin is salvation through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we read at the end of the section about sin yesterday where Paul talks about all falling short of the glory of God being justified by grace as his gift through the redemption that is now in Jesus Christ. The redemption is the buying back Jesus paid the price that was required, uh, the fulfillment of the law to give us the righteousness that we require to, to be acceptable to God. So if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, then we have that cause to rejoice every single day that the solution to our sin has been provided by God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He then goes on uh, in, the, in the section on salvation to talk about faith. Uh, he talks about Abraham. Um, so chapter 4 starts, What shall we say was gained by Abraham our forefather according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about. So Abraham wasn't justified by his works. Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness, Paul goes on to say. And then he kind of, as you get into chapter 5, he starts to conclude the section. And we have this great, this great verse in chapter, chapter 5, verse 9. So he's made this argument and then he's coming to the conclusion. Um, Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God? Sin has its consequence and the consequence of sin is not being able to spend eternity with God where he is. And that's a pretty heavy price to pay. And the incredible story of the Bible, the incredible story of the gift of Jesus, is that because of what he did on our behalf, because he purchased our salvation with his blood, we have the opportunity to go and be with God where he is forever. And that's a great reward that we've done nothing to deserve. We can do nothing to deserve. It is, as Paul says uh, in Ephesians, it is the gift of God. So today, it'd be great if we remember, as followers of Jesus, that great gift of God in the Lord Jesus Christ to purchase our salvation. Maybe spend some time today a bit of quiet reflecting on the price that God paid for you in his son in what he went through to secure your salvation. And the, the, the plan of redemption, which started back in Genesis, reaches its fulfillment and its climax in Jesus. And that salvation is open to all. It's utterly inclusive because God is willing to save to the uttermost all who come to him. And Paul's making one of the main points, as we've already thought about in Romans, is the inclusion of the gospel. Gospel communities are made up of people who are not like us, who are different from us, who are from every conceivable possible background. And that's the great thing about the gospel, and that's the great thing about the love of God, is it's open to all. And the offer of salvation is to all 
who will come to Jesus in repentance and faith. So remember that today, let that, let that encourage you. We're part of an inclusive community where we, we praise and worship a God who offers his love uh, unconditionally and inclusively to all who will come to him. So hope that encourages you. We'll continue tomorrow in the series when we'll be looking at sanctification, another good, uh, a good church word, and we'll have a little think about that tomorrow. So have a great day, and we'll speak to you soon.